Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome Kidambi Srikant. Well, what a year this man has had coming back from injury. Srikant Kidambi. And his opponent is from Denmark. He is reigning world champion and currently ranked number one in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise for our local hero, Victor Axelsson. What a reception for the home star. Not only a Dane, but born in this very city. Only the third man from Denmark ever to win the gold medal at the World Badminton Championships. 40 years after the first man achieved that, Fleming Delfts in 1977, and 20 years after the second man, Peter Rasmussen, also in Glasgow, but that was back in 1997. So Shrikansk Kadambi. Well, at the beginning of the year, he had a four-month layoff due to a stress fracture in his right ankle. And the way he has bounced back, beaten finalist at the Singapore Super Series. Then the next two Super Series events, the Indonesian Premier Super Series and the Australian Open wins two titles. What a year for this young man five Super Series tournament finals in total, having won four of them. First was at the China Premier of 2014 when he beat Lin Dan in the final. So two hugely popular players around the world in the men's singles discipline. Victor Axelsson not only the World Championship gold medalist, he was bronze medalist at last year's Olympic Games as well. He's been European champion. He's been in nine Super Series tournament finals. But Trikans Kadambi is 24 years of age, which is just one year older than his opponent from... Lapelum in India has been as high as three in the world ranking that was for 11 weeks from the 4th of June 2015 and he's gone down to number two on the Super Series standings now as far as his matches are concerned he had fellow Indian player the qualifier in the first round in the second round John Hayok Jin of Korea now it says 111 minutes <laughs> They had an hour's delay. Yeah. That was the match. It was one love in the deciding game, the third game, when the lights failed on court number three yesterday evening. That had an hour's delay before the match was resumed on court number two. Victor Axelson, well, he's, as I say, one year younger than his opponent at the age of 23, born here in this city of Orlandsa. Became world number one on the 28th of September, so this is his fourth consecutive week. He was a semi-finalist here in 2015, and in fact was a quarter-finalist as an 18-year-old in 2011. Well, as you can see, both of his previous matches, first of all against the qualifier Takuma Ueda of Japan, and then yesterday against the player promoted from the qualifying Weinan of Hong Kong won that uh, deciding game on his third match point opportunity. In fact, it'd been 1916 up, but it all became very tight in the deciding game yesterday. This will be the sixth meeting between the two players, and uh, Victor Axelson leads 3 2, and the three matches he's won in the last three matches, including in the quarter-final of the Japan Open last month, which Victor Axelsson went on to win his first ever Japan Open Super Series title. 
Well, the two occasions that Shrikanth has beaten his opponent of today, the first two times, were both won in three games. When Victor Axelsson has won between these two men, it's been in two straight games. So, Axelsson, a mega star now here in Denmark in sporting terms, not just in the world of badminton. And his opponent is a mega star in his home country. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, you could say uh, the future of badminton, as Sol Lichon Wei was quoted saying that he expected a fierce rivalry between the Texas and then Kento Momota when he's back to Super Series uh, level play. But I think this, this gentleman uh, on the opposite side of the court, Shrikanth, and his fellow compatriot on the adjacent court, um, H.S. Pernoy to be uh, counted in the mix as well. We talked a little bit about it yesterday, perhaps on his entrance and some young Indonesians doing well. So um, I think we're in a transition period here in, in the men's singles where the youngsters are making um, a charge at uh, pushing the old ones down the ranking lists. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Kandami Street Camp, India. Richard Bramley from New Zealand, our umpire, making the announcements. On my left, Victor Axelsson, Denmark. <laughs> Kidambi Street Camps to serve, level. <laughs> so this men's singles quarter final. And a good start by the newly crowned world champion. Oh, that's not the best of low serves. Challenge in these very, very early stages. Well, I definitely thought that was worth the challenge. Could looked out to me. Could, yeah, it looked out, but could possibly have uh, just caught the line. Touched you think? the line. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a given. Oh, it's oh. clearly not. How did that get called in? Yeah, we can see on the replay there. very interesting to me, Steve, is I've watched Victor Axelsson uh, playing international Three. tournaments since he was a teenager, 17, 18 year old. In fact, when he first reached the quarterfinal here as an 18 year old in 2011, and of course, on the way to that quarterfinal, he beat the former world and Olympic champion, Taufik Hidiat, but he was under no pressure. Three. Nobody was expecting him to win. Now, all of a sudden, Everybody is expecting him to win the whole time. He's going to have to learn to really deal with pressure. And that's going to be an interesting development. And to see his character come through and how he deals with that. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. I, I've got more to say, but let's, let's look at the challenge first. Yeah. Challenge from Shrikans. Yeah. Danish coaches. Oh. In by a whisker. Yeah. It's shots like that. That is. I, I'm really glad I don't have to call them because I mean, there's a 50-50 chance you get them right when you're sitting on the chair and have to make yeah. a, a split decision. Yeah. Uh, an immediate decision. It's 
going wide. There's no doubt. Getting back to what you um, mentioned, Jill, there's no doubt that Victor feels the pressure in this tournament. Uh, but there's always been pressure when he's playing uh, at home here in Odense because he's a native um, born player here. So th there's probably some more pressure, but I think the World Championship title has given him a lot more um, confidence and belief in himself. I had a chance to meet him shortly after the World Championships and immediately when he walked in the door, I, I, I felt that he was a more calm person. He was relying on himself. He was sort of satisfied. And he said also that if I don't win a match more in my career, it's still been a success. Yeah. Um, so I think that he will go out and, um, and, and challenge and, and simply just go for it. Now, does that mean he wins this match? I'm not certain about that at all. No. It's nice. What a good rally. Yeah, well played for a can. Uh, it's, that's a very, very interesting comment to me because I can remember prior to the Olympic Games, I think in London in 2012, or maybe it was even before that, Lee Chong Wei said, I need a gold medal to validate my career. Yep. For a man that's been in 100 international tournament finals, won 45 Super Series events, contested four World Championship finals, three Olympic finals, and he still believes he needs to validate his career. This yeah. man has said it's already validated for him. Yeah. Um. I've seen a Danish player who also needed a gold medal to validate his career. He made a perfect um, sort of evaluation of his career. That was John Hals Christensen, who said he'd been in five World Championship finals and he lost them all, but he lost them to better players. He'd done everything he could. Yeah. But he didn't leave anything out there. He lost them to better players. That was, that was a great evaluation in my mind. Yeah. Deserves all the strings snipped out, and if you're wondering why the players do that, it just releases the tension all the way across the the frame. The frame. Otherwise, the frame gets um, contorted. Yeah, exactly. I remember uh, Bjorn Borg, Bjorn Borg, the, the, the young viewers. Uh, Bjorn Borg was a. Uh, tennis player around the late 70s and he had a really really tough um, tension in his tennis racket and his manager told a story that once in a while the strings broke during the night by just the tear and wear of it and, and he would wake from the sound and get up and uh, cut them in order not to ruin the racket mm. well of course he played with wooden rackets didn't he he, he played with Dunne. <laughs> yeah Oh, full pirouette with the backhand smash there. Good rally. Uh, I sensed that it was in progress. It was an important rally too. Yeah. Judgment lands just long and a six point advantage for Victor Axelson at the mid game interval. 
flot spil. Watches it closely. Så skal vi huske, at det er det her for en ubalanced spil. Lige pludselig kommer de her lange dueller, hvor han spiller godt, og han bruger sin løft. Men det er generelt mest af alt, fordi han har der, at der skal skabes plads op på forbanen. Ja. Okay. Godt arbejde her. Ja, rigtig godt arbejde. Især at benene for at være højt på bolden hele tiden. Ikke? Husk, løft mellem en spil. Den korte maskering, og så en gang imellem, så gå på nettet. Helt tiden flytte ham. Ja. Men, og men det, han ikke får lov til at løbe lige bag ikke? Ja, ja lige nagtigt. Og han, er det samme, når du slår, så vil han jo dreje dig hver gang. Ja, men, også, ikke? men stadigvæk, det er det her lille antrit deroppe, ikke? og de, op, de opbilder ham til at blive ved med at presse på. Okay. Ikke? Vær, på ham. Ja, vær, på, vær på ham, ikke? Kenneth Jonsson, the coach, and the words of wisdom there, Steen? Yeah, very alert on the front court. Um, we know that Shrikand is uh, a lethal attacking player, so Victor's got to control the front court, and the Danes expect a few lifts from uh, from the Indian player here in the, um, after the interval, but mainly to sort of open up the um, the front court. And um, one of the long rallies we saw um, a while ago, we saw that Shrikant was playing the net in the backhand side and Victor Axelsen was challenging, playing back at him. That's going to be one of the um, uh, crucial uh, moments, who is going to dominate the net. Both players want the attack. I think... Um, oh. I think we have another good rally here. Yeah. It's gone wide. Oh, just missed it. It's going to be a battle for the attack because uh, both players would like to play from above the tape, especially uh, in these windy conditions here. It's going to be a battle for the net to get the attack and also to sort of see if you can uh, anticipate the defense a little bit from your opponent. And one of the things that makes me a little bit um, careful uh, predicting the winner here is that exactly the windy conditions. Victor Axelsen has not done well in windy conditions so far in his career. We haven't seen him in windy conditions since the World Championships. But it's opened the match really well here. The problem for him is he's played six Indonesia Opens with probably one of the most windy halls in the world. Played six Indonesia Opens, only once progressed beyond the first round. He's played a number of Singapore Opens, not with good results. Mostly not good results. So yeah. how will he cope with that today? And we know that Shrikant has won the Indonesia Open in 2017. Yeah. No, it's just wide. Eight, I'm, 14. I'm wondering if the... Yeah, it was just wide. No question. And that's a lovely smash, too. sudden having looked as if he was cruising with a eight point advantage five straight points from Shrikans. Yeah, it's a I difference it's a complexion on it doesn't it i i think he's uh, balancing on the edge uh victor he he opened up so well but if he 
does a little bit more, which I think he does right now, then it makes mistakes because I, I feel that he's really, really uh, fired up and wants to win this match. And was forced to play late last night, wasn't particularly happy, but totally disrupted his rhythm because of the delay in uh, the matches on court one. Yes, but we ought to also spare a thought for Shrikant Kadambi. I mean, he was interrupted in the middle of his match for over an hour. For an hour, that was even, even worse. And then he had to change courts. Beat uh, John Hak Jin in a match that sort of uh, shifted all the time. Big, big wins in the first and second game for um, each player and then a big lead for Shrikan in the third and almost got caught up with. Oh, that's a bad miss from Shrikan. Yes, he was 14-4 up in the yeah. deciding game. And 19-12, and then it went 19-18. But he's scraped home. Missed it. Slow serve, wasn't it? Got what it deserved from Shrikanth. Yeah, look at that. What a net shot. Oh! Hey. I don't believe it. <laughs> Trick and perhaps a little casual with what he believed would be a kill. Look at that super net shot. Here he goes. The kill was straight at Victor Axis and Racket. What great reactions. Phenomenal. Two consecutive rallies. So fast getting up here. Look at this, he's on his knees, gets up. That is amazing. And there was an even wilder rally from yesterday. I saw it on the Danish um, television. In the defense, tight to his body, falls down, gets up, and kills the next one at the net. Wow. Well, he's got seven game point opportunities now, the world champion. 20. Game point, 13. Oh, that was a better serve. 14. 20. Missed it. <laughs> We're back to some challenges. Oh. Oof. Yeah, I think he might be right. I think he might be right. And he's smiling a little towards the. Uh, I can't see whether it's a Lions man or Lions woman. Yeah, it was out. Yeah. So opening game. On a challenge from Axelson and he's proved right. Opening game 21 14. 17 minutes. Yeah. Looking at it again, it does look. 
definitely wide. And the thing is, would he been would have been able to smile at that without a world championship in the bag? Yeah. Men det er også vigtigt, det er, at han skal føle, at han skal ligge derop, ligesom han spiller der midtvejs, hvor han begynder at spille perfekt. Det er vigtigt, at han skal føle, at han skal være der hele tiden. Husk kombination af, at der hvor han begynder at rykke med det, der begynder du at stå lidt og spille den her i stedet for at spille den lidt hårdere, så kan han nå op. Ja, lige nok, hvis det bliver for blød. Så er det bedre at lave blød sådan der, end ind mod midten. Okay, stadigvæk. Det er forbanen. Ligegyldigt hvad han går og laver og løft, så er det stadigvæk forbanen og mellemspillet, der, altså, der er nøglen her. Ja. Sidst men ikke mindst, så antrit dog. Antrit, ikke? Og han, vil, han, ja, og han vil krydse dig hele tiden. Så. Vente, hvis jeg er god på ja. Hvis jeg hænger lidt. Første prioritet, jeg vil have den stejl. Ja, stejl. For at komme højt på forbanen igen, så giver det dig mulighed. Så spiller vi for næste bold. Ja. Så husk, og så okay, fint mærke, at tage 3-4 i starten. Ja, lige nok. Det, ja, men det er fint. Det er bare være på til. Så skal vi have husk tidlig løft en gang imellem, og ser ned til den forhold her. Vi sætter med også, når ja, så langt frem. Ja, lige nok. Okay. Viggo, det er forbanen og mellemspillet, der er det vinkt vigtigt. is using all of their allotted time. Kenneth Jonasson happy with his man? Yeah, very happy. Um, key key um, factors, front court and, uh, and mid court play. And also the first step, the acceleration towards the net that has been really, really good in the first game. Um, This, this second game here, this is the real challenge. This is uh, Victor playing the um, side where he's having a little bit more trouble playing the backcourt of uh, Kidambi. On the other hand, his attack gets help. So it's going to be even more lethal. So a lot of battle on the front court, I would expect. Exchange. That's amazing. Yeah, force the short left for both of them. Tight spinning net shots of their opponents. Tight spinning net shot. Look at this. Look at that. I was taking it really high there, Rick Axelson, and it was like Shrikan didn't really believe in his own net game, letting. Dane have a chance to play back at him and he's got to cover that trick and he's got to earn the lifts otherwise there's going to be no lift from Axelson unless he's forced to do it. That's going to be interesting to see whether he's able to control the drift. Couldn't really see it in the first place because Victor put his uh, size 47 in front of it, <laughs> so it was impossible to see from up here. No! Five, 
Oh, excellent. Well taken. Racket arm outstretched, tiny little tap with the racket head generates the power. That's fabulous. with that crouch defence, he wasn't even watching the shuttle as he played that round-the-head defensive shot. Five, seven. Oh, unfortunately, we didn't see it, but it really was extraordinary. Stays in. Wow. Seven, eight. Yeah, just inside that back line. That was a perfect uh, lift. Because it was almost impossible for Shrikan to get below it if he wanted to, to play it. It's a really, really good match right now. Good smash from Shrikant. Going for steepness of shot rather than power. Disappointed in that because Shrikan had been in trouble in his deep forehand corner. the first flick serve, isn't it? From Victor. Yeah, you're normally really careful with the flicks against uh, Shrikan because of his uh, strong attack, but you need to do it because otherwise he comes closer and closer and higher and higher on the short services. Back level. That, that could be very important for the rest of the second game that um, Shrikant didn't get that 11-7 lead. But Axis and close the gap. Oi, oi, oi. Oh my goodness me. Oh dear me. Not only closed the gap, he's got the advantage when he's up. But that didn't look good to me. No, I don't think you should watch this replay, no. Joe. Okay. 
fedt. Ja, flot, flot kom tilbage. Ah, Hus. it was okay. Grunden til, at du lige pludselig får lov til at spille bagbanen, det er, fordi du går op og møder den, og du ikke uh... står og venter på den. Ja. Ikke? Når That du er her, strange. så kan du spille alt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jeg forventer, at han kommer ud igen, og så prøver himself. at sætte noget pres på, altså øge tempoet. <laughs> så skal du stå mod, tørre dobbelt løft, eller flytte den. Yes. Helt til en overvågning på. Ja, lige nøjagtigt. Men, men når du saver, så er det antripsramt til næste. Så må du selv vurdere, om vi skal spille til det eller op over. Nemlig. Men det må ikke blive den langsomme her. God højde på det der. Any significant advice there, or just? Well, I, I didn't catch all of it, but there was this again uh, uh, with the acceleration to the front court. I think that's really, really important. There it is. play some lifts from the uh, front court otherwise um, he makes it a little bit too easy for Victor Axelsen 12, got to keep him guessing whether it's gonna be a short one to try and get the attack or a lift to put pressure on Axelsen on the back court <laughs> Straight slice from Shrikant Kadami. Played to perfection. Oi, he changed his mind. And that cost him dear. Yeah. I'll say it again, this is a fantastic second game we're watching here. The pace is so high and, and what what can it Jonas and the Danish coach said to Vix Axelsen, we, we got to make him play his best. And Shrikand is being asked to play his absolute best. If he doesn't, then Victor is there to capitalize on it. Remember that Victor Axelsen has won his last two tournaments, World Championships and Japan Open. So he's on a, a 13 match winning streak right now. No wonder he's looking confident. Uh, well worked. I think I've seen Victor play better attack than in, in this match here. Because he's being asked to do it in a really, really fast pace. 
the combination of um, the attack and the pace that that's that's really amazing Good lift, fantastic lift. Yeah. My hesitation has cost Victor Axel some death. Yeah. Uh, forehand, then backhand, then making Shrikant play the forehand defence again. Down the forehand, there's the backhand, now down the forehand again. Always oh, making Shrikan's twist and turn. And I think back on some of the other occasions where we've watched Victor Axelson play over the last couple of years, where we've said, OK, the backhand side seemed a little um, not so natural, a little bit stiff at some times. There's nothing stiff about it no. uh, at the moment. No, but he's worked very hard on that, hasn't he? Yeah, to improve that with a gymnastic and coach. And and Shrikan does the same, and uh, I think we're, we're having fireworks right now here between these two players. They're both, they're both struggling to find that edge where it's, I mean, they're being asked to play their best, both players, and, yeah. and sometimes you get over, you, you, you go a little over what you can do. Good. Good shot. It goes long. Good little forehand deception by the Indian. That's a, a nice variation on the smash, aiming towards the right hip of Shrikant. Yeah, very nice variation. Oh, he's missed it! Oh, my goodness. No, oh, he set himself up. He was waiting for it, and then hit it too flat. That could be costly. Pushed it long. isn't it oh my word good shot and this is this is a match that it, it, it's sometimes a little hard to to see but it's mentally so demanding because you have to be at 100 percent all the time if you're a little bit below then you're behind yeah
Oh, that's unusual in men's singles. Normally, when one player wants to change the shuttle, the other agrees. Not this time. Nineteen all. Great defence. Oh my goodness me, how did he do that? Oh! Mm, trick to go. He hit the blue. How did he get this one back? Look at that. And he's, he's up. He's in, up immediately. In one mo movement. That one hits the blue. Yeah. It's the only player who's hit the blue this tournament. little bit of frustration understandable but that that is moving as fast as you possibly can yeah so three straight points from Shrika Skadambe and a game point opportunity but that's bravely saved I thought that was in. I thought the line judge got that right, but Victor Axelson wants to challenge it. First challenge of this second game. Well, I'm pretty certain the line judge will be proved right. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, indeed. So a second game point opportunity for Shrik and Skadambi to close out this second game. One game all. Trickad drops his racket in celebration of securing the second game, 22-20. And it is one game all. And I can understand him because he's playing a Victor Axelson that's firing on all cylinders, yeah. and yeah. yet he's taking him to three games and giving himself okay. a chance of winning this match. Yeah. Hey. Vi skal godt, det kunne blive sådan en kamp. Ja. Prøv lige at sætte uh, ord, hvor du er lige nu. Fint nok. Der er mega, mega, mega svært ved at komme til det vinde. Ja. Det er fair nok. Det er fair nok. Ja, ikke? Spændt. Ja, en lille smule. Jeg har ingen mennesker, der har noget sæver. Nej. Men så gør du det faktisk pisse godt derinde, hvis det er tilfældet. Ja, ikke? Prøv her. Ja. Tak hvad. Vi skal lige være roligt. Vi skal lige være roligt. Okay. Vi husker. Det er stadigvæk forbanen, det handler om. Frem og møde dem. Pas på, hvis du ikke er i en god position, så vil spille det tætte net lige. Ja. Fordi så er det, at han går op og enten løfter lidt, eller laver den her maskering tilbage på hjørnet. Ja. Så hvis du ikke er op i rullet... Det er ikke kamp om, hvem der kommer først, når man ikke kan. Ja, lige nagtigt. Lige nagtigt. Ja. Herovre fra. Ja. Frem, tilbage, frem, tilbage. Ja. Men det er herovre, det sker. Ja, det med. Ja. Men lige den ene der, når han drejer dig, hvis du ikke er i god position, ja. så heller lægge den lidt længere ind i banen. Ja så han ikke kan gå op og lave den, den lige maskering tilbage. Mm. Mm. Godt. Altså bare øh, afslappet. Ja. Lige meget hvad der sker her, så hæ hæng i, ja. hæng i, hæng i. Okay? Ja, positiv, ikke? Viggo? Ja. Positiv, ikke? Vi skal... En af gangen. En af gangen. So what was the advice there from Kenneth? Yeah, reinforcement that is still um, the front court um, and the net and the mid court play that's decisive um, 
Victor said that he felt that he had big problems controlling the drift and Kenneth said uh, very wisely, okay, if that's the case, then you're actually doing really, really well because you were just two points away from, uh, from winning the match here. Um, Ask them to, to just breathe deep at the interval, but I think actually also in between the rallies, I, I feel that Victor perhaps is rushing himself a little bit and getting ready a little bit too quickly. initially that it might go wide but with the drift it came back in Two, one. One. Yeah, clearly in. Yeah. Yeah. that's that's a really really good setup here for access and when he plays the net in his own backhand side because if she can place back Victor can uh, push his um, flat um, lifts a little Three. bit more towards the backhand side of Shrikant. That's the safe corner playing this side of the court. That's getting more difficult when they change ends. Oh, a little bit of trickery. Oh, that's a fantastic play. Yeah. I'm a little nervous that, um, from a Danish perspective, that Shrikant has learned a bit more from the first game. I don't think Victor can play much better on the opposite side of the court than we saw him do in the second game. So if I have to... Uh, pick a winner right now, I think my money would be on uh, Shrikant. There's no doubt he's playing well, and previous match statistics between these two, every time it's gone to three games, Shrikant has won. Yeah. the backhand side, the flat backhand side was covered. He was there and ready. Shrikant and getting the upper hand. Oh, brilliant. Excellent. What accuracy from Shrikanth on this final smash. Now, just threaded down the line. Do not delay the game. Do not delay the game. Six, three. But, I mean... Ten rallies into the third game, and we played 47 minutes. I mean, come on. No one's delaying any game. No, exactly. That's all. Thought that was coming back in too. Not quite.
Great smash. Eight of the last nine points to Shrikant. That's him. Yeah. Has the bubble burst? Yeah, I think it has. Yeah. I think it has. Eleven points now for Shrikant. One three down. And now eleven oh. four up. That's the graves dipped. Hang. That's the graves really, really dipped in your resources. But you'll be needed to take it one point at a time. And so you'll be needed to dedicate yourself. But where are you? You work a lot. Yeah. But try to be in it. Yeah. Hver eneste duel, fokus, fokus. Det må ikke kun være ét slag og ingen løsninger. Okay. Vi skal have centreret noget af det her spil. Ind mod midten. Han går og venter på vinklerne, så går han højt på dem, eller krydsløfter der. Er du nødt til at have vinklerne med, så klar med catcheren? Ja, men kun når du er ekstra højt, ellers så skal det ind mod midten. Ja. Kenneth asks Victor, where are you right now? And it's a little bit difficult to see where is he? Is he um, frustrated? Is he angry? Is he tired? Or what? And Victor says, I feel, I, I feel tired. And Kenneth says, yeah, he, you, you've got to dig deep now and, and, and go, for, go for solutions, not one-hit wonders. And, and that's, uh, in my opinion, a very um, <laughs> correct term for what's happened since, like, uh, what was the score? Four something, three all. Oops. Oh, and it's a really loose net shot from Shrikans. And then Victor Axelson makes the error. Yeah. Look how loose this is. Look at that. What on earth was that? Must have changed his mind. 12 of the last 13 points. The, the, the thing is that Shrikan, in, in the second game, I felt Mick Jackson played really, really well with the drift, but Shrikan managed to survive and, and shut him down, and now everything is uh, shut down, so he, he's not going to win this way anymore. No. He's probably not going to win anyway, so he might as well try to develop his uh, win game. Um, of course, that's, that's uh, <laughs> in many ways a stupid comment. You're playing on home court as a world champion. You haven't lost a match since yes. that. So that's not yeah. going to happen, but he's not going to win playing this no. this way. No. No, and, and I mean, the bubble really has well and truly burst. Yeah. He's gone. That as well. Seventeen of eighteen points. Yeah. Oh, finally, the run is broken. No, it's only a question of trying to make his scoreline a little more respectable, surely. I think Shrikant will try to finish this as quickly as possible because of what happened yesterday. 14-4 mm. against John Hak Jin and uh, was in trouble in the end. Yeah, can't see it happening again today. Two points away from beating the world champion Shrikant. Yeah. 
match points have arrived. Delaying the inevitable. Magnificent match by uh, Trickant. Mm. I think he chose ends um, after the coin toss. And uh, this match has panned out the way he and his coaches uh, hoped it would. Yeah. The way they planned it. Victory to Srikanth Kadambi. Wonderful sportsmanship shown by the world champion embracing and congratulating his opponent because as Steen was saying Shrikath, Shrikanth Kadambi was superb today he weathered the storm he weathered the onslaught and then in the deciding game from 1-3 down it was all one way traffic So the winning streak comes to an end for the new world number one. 13 straight matches to take the world title and the Japan Open. Uh, but he has to settle for second best here in today's quarterfinal. 14-21, 22-20, 21-7 in the deciding game in a match lasting 55 minutes. So just one more quarterfinal to come and it features the bronze medalists from the World Championships, Takeshi Kimura and Keigo Sonoda up against the gold medalists from the recent World Championships, Ilu Chung and Zhang Nan.